If you have edited for any length of time using DaVinci Resolve on a Mac, there's a good chance you've run into the Mac Gamma Shift problem, which is where your exported videos look flat and washed out compared to what you see inside Resolve. This video is going to be a very deep dive into how to fix that problem. And to preface this, I am not a professional colorist. I'm a wedding filmmaker and a YouTuber, so pretty much all my videos are being created for the internet, YouTube, Instagram, and delivering those full wedding films to clients who will primarily watch them on their laptops or phones. I'm gonna be really getting into things in this video, so if you're just here for a quick answer, you're probably gonna be better off skipping to the end. The one thing that I will not be going very deep into is why Apple computers do this. Plenty of other people have already talked about that. Basically, Apple has a software built into all their computers called ColorSync that manages how color is displayed on your MacBook or whatever Mac you have. And for whatever reason, ColorSync displays Rec. 709 videos incorrectly. It essentially desaturates and lowers the contrast whenever you view a Rec. 709 video in preview or QuickTime. So the colors you see when editing in Resolve don't end up matching what QuickTime shows you in your final export. However, when viewing that same export in VLC, the colors will match perfectly to Resolve. And what makes it even more confusing is that YouTube also seems to apply a color shift sometimes. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube giving multiple different solutions to this problem. Some people say to turn on the Mac display profiles inside Resolve's settings. Some people say you need to have certain export settings. Some say you need to apply a specific LUT when color grading, but then turn it off before exporting. And other people say you should just stop using QuickTime altogether and use VLC for everything. It's all quite confusing, and I want to know if there is a combination of resolve settings and export settings that will produce a video with a consistent image across everything. Resolve, Preview, VLC, YouTube, and I'd like it to look as consistent as possible between Mac and PC. No matter what platform or app is being used, I want the image to remain unchanged. I don't actually know if that's possible though. My plan is to test three main things. Which output color space is best, which combination of color space and gamma tags are the best when exporting, and if the Mac display color profile setting is actually helpful. So I did three rounds of tests, each with a different output color space. I tested Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2, which is the output color space I used to use on my PC. I also tested Rec. 709A and P3D65. With all of these tests, I kept the same timeline color space, which is DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, and I had color management turned off. For each of the three output color spaces, I exported the same five second clip with 12 different combinations of color space and gamma tags. This included Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2, Rec. 709 Rec. 709, Rec. 709 Rec. 709A, Rec. 709 sRGB, sRGB Gamma 2.2, sRGB Rec. 709, sRGB Rec. 709A, sRGB sRGB. P3D65 Gamma 2.2, P3D65 Rec. 709, P3D65 Rec. 709A, and finally P3D65 sRGB. And each time I switched to a different output color space, I took two screenshots of the Resolve viewer, one with display profiles turned off and one with them turned on. By default, this setting is turned off and Resolve is showing you, I guess, how your footage truly looks independent of Apple's color sync. With this setting turned off, Resolve is effectively outside of color sync's control. But by turning on that setting, you're allowing color sync to affect how Resolve's viewer displays color. The plan with the testing is to open up both of the Resolve viewer screenshots and one at a time, compare them to every single export using preview. With the idea being to find which combination of export settings and display profiles being on or off perfectly matches between Resolve and preview. If the exported video inside preview matches one of the Resolve screenshots, it will move on to round two, where I'll then compare what it looks like in preview to what it looks like in VLC and see if it's still consistent. And I'll just apologize right up front here. I'm gonna be saying a bunch of super technical stuff, so best of luck trying to follow along. <laughs> I'll be sure to label everything on screen, but feel free to put any questions in the comments below. As soon as I began comparing the exports, I very quickly noticed three things. 
One, when you have display profiles turned on, Resolve's viewer will change how it displays color depending on the output color space that you're using. So Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2 is gonna look a lot different than P3 D65. But if you have display profiles turned off, there is zero color change to the Resolve viewer when you switch output color spaces. The second thing is that VLC displayed exactly the same colors across every single export, no matter what output color space was chosen, which means it will always match the Resolve viewer when the display profile setting is turned off. And the third is that there seems to be zero difference between an export gamma tag of Rec. 709 and Rec. 709A. They seem to be exactly the same thing, and it appears that you can pretty much use them interchangeably. So to make this whole thing a lot easier, I'm just gonna skip over the exports with a gamma tag of Rec. 709 and only mention the ones with Rec. 709A. All right, moving on to test number one with the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2 output color space. With the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2 tests, I found that with the display profiles on, none of the exports in preview matched Resolve's viewer. And even with display profiles turned off, there is only one export that matched, P3 D65 sRGB. All of the other exports had some sort of color shift when compared to both the viewer on and the viewer off screenshots of Resolve, which means that all of those are immediately disqualified since they don't match Resolve at all. I took the P3 D65 sRGB export that did work and opened it up with VLC to check color consistency. And it also matched perfectly, both to preview and to resolve. So that one export from test one matches across the board, resolve, preview, and VLC. Test number two is with the Rec. 709A output color space. In this test, I actually had a few exports that matched between resolve and preview. Rec. 709, Rec. 709A, and sRGB Rec. 709A both perfectly match Resolve when the display profile setting was turned on. So I took those exports that matched the viewer on screenshot into VLC to see if they would match between preview and VLC, and they did not. They look quite a bit different in VLC than they do in preview. And once again, the only export that matched Resolve with the display profile setting turned off was P3 D65 sRGB, just like it did in test one. And comparing the version from test one to the version from test two, they also match perfectly, which means that in this case, the output color space didn't actually apply any sort of color shift. Test number three was for the P3 D65 output color space, and the results turned out to be identical to test number one. None of the exports matched Resolve with display profiles turned on, and only the P3 D65 sRGB export matched when the display profile setting was turned off. At this point in the testing, I've essentially determined two things. The export tags P3 D65 sRGB seem to be the only tags that give consistent color across all programs. I'm getting the same colors in preview, VLC, and resolve with the display profile setting turned off. And surprisingly, it doesn't seem to matter which output color space I use. All three output color spaces are giving me the same result. Secondly, using the Rec. 709A output color space with Resolve's display profiles turned on and the export tags set to Rec. 709, Rec. 709A will give consistent color between Resolve and Preview, but VLC doesn't seem to care and will show different colors. Moving on to YouTube uploads, I wanted to see if YouTube is going to create its own color shift when I upload stuff to that platform. I uploaded all five of the remaining files to YouTube and took screenshots of them while using Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. All three browsers look exactly the same when viewing the same file, so there doesn't really seem to be any variation when it comes to the browser used, at least from what I can tell. Both of the Rec. 709A exports did amazing here. When uploaded to YouTube, they perfectly matched what I saw in Resolve and in Preview, and they perfectly matched each other. There seems to be no difference between the Rec. 709 and sRGB color space export tag, as long as the gamma tag is set to Rec. 709A. So I think at this point, I'm pretty much just gonna ditch the sRGB version and only use the 709, 709A file going forward. Two things are happening with my three P3 D65 sRGB exports I uploaded to YouTube. For one, all three of them looked exactly the same on YouTube. So the particular output color space didn't seem to have any impact here either. And just like in preview, they look distinctly different from the Rec. 709A YouTube uploads. 
Secondly, these P3 D65 YouTube uploads do not perfectly match Resolve or Preview. They're actually a little bit brighter for some reason on YouTube. It's not terrible though, you really have to have them side by side with the original to actually be able to see a difference. My final test is to see how these files look when viewed on a PC. When opened with Windows default media player and with VLC on the PC, all the exports looked identical. Just like how on the Mac, every single export looks identical when opened with VLC. Because all the exports looked exactly the same when viewed on the PC, I assumed it was kind of the same thing that was happening with VLC on the Mac, where all the files match resolve when the display profiles are turned off. But to my surprise, that wasn't it at all. They instead are a nearly identical match to the Rec. 709A export. They just get slightly darker on the PC. I also took a few screenshots on the PC of how exports look on YouTube. It's basically identical to how they look on the Mac, again, just slightly darker. And when viewed on YouTube, the Rec. 709A and P3 D65 files still look distinctly different, just like they do on the Mac, which is in direct contrast to how the raw files appear on the PC, where the Rec. 709A and P3 D65 files look identical. Kind of strange. At the end of all of this testing, I'm basically left with two options. Option one, Turn off Mac display color profiles in Resolve's settings, set your output color space to seemingly whatever you'd like, and set your export tags to P3 D65 and sRGB. Option two is to turn on Mac display color profiles in Resolve's settings, set your output color space to Rec. 709A, and set your export tags to Rec. 709 and Rec. 709A. Files that stay exclusively inside the Mac ecosystem seem to have perfect color consistency between Resolve, Preview, and VLC when using option one. There does seem to be a small increase in brightness when uploading to YouTube, but it's really not that bad. However, if you take the raw file itself and play that on a PC, there will be a noticeable color shift. It's actually not terrible. The main thing that changes is that there's a little bit of a decrease in saturation. Option two will provide consistent colors between Resolve, Preview, YouTube, and PC. But if those files are viewed with VLC on a Mac, there will be a color shift. And I'd say this color shift is quite a bit worse than the Mac to PC color shift you get with option one. This color shift adds a lot more saturation and more contrast. So what do you do with all this? Well, it's kind of up to you. <laughs> I would say both options give usable results. It's really just up to you to decide which one works better for your circumstances. In my opinion, option one is nearly perfect for working between Macs or uploading content to the web. If you are delivering files to people who may be using a PC, I probably wouldn't recommend this option though. That's where option two would come in. I think for me, I'm probably going to use option two because if I deliver a video to somebody with a PC, I don't want their viewing experience to be lessened. And I think the majority of people who use Macs use QuickTime to watch videos rather than VLC, so I don't really think I'm gonna run into too many issues where people are watching my videos on VLC. I know that was a ton of information, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And again, I'm not a pro colorist or anything. These are all just basic tests I'm doing on a couple laptops. So there's a very real possibility that everything I just said is somehow completely wrong. Okay, bye.